So if you've been watching my videos long enough, you know that I often invite you to listen to your heart and to follow your balls. And I'm not the first person to say that. You've probably heard people say that you should follow your heart or trust your gut instinct. When I say balls, it's very synonymous with the lower portion of your torso. Balls, gut, kind of go together. If you've been watching long enough, you also know that I use the metaphor that describes the three types of consciousness that is within the human being. And the metaphor that I use is the head, the heart, and the balls. But that could also be likened onto the id, ego, super ego, reverse order, or the neocortex, cortex, medulla, father, son, holy ghost. There's this triune dignity of man. We're, we're, we're united as three parts in our consciousness. Another way to say it is that we've got our rational thinking, calculating mind, we've got our passionate feeling mind, and then we've got our intuitive, instinctual mind. So you've, got, you've literally got three minds. An interesting thing that, I, that I've recognized, I grew up as a Catholic, so when we pray, we do this. We'd go, in the name of the Father, the Son, pointing to the heart, to the Holy Ghost. This movement represents our horizontal consciousness or animal consciousness or instinct. Animals, horizontal, you know, think horizontal. Horses, dogs, cats. They have an instinct that allows them to get through life successfully. And we also have this horizontal thinking. So when I say listen to your heart, trust your gut or trust your balls, it is literally the, the sun or the passion part of the human being and the instinctual part of the human being, as opposed to the rational part of the human being, our triune unity, our trinity, that would be a better way to say it. So we live in an environment and we live in a culture where there's all emphasis is put towards educating the head brain, the father, right? The neocortex, the rational brain. What happens when we go to school is they teach us how to shut down our body, i.e. sit, and they stimulate, they teach us to stimulate the workings of the rational mind. That's why school is a lot of memorizing. Do you understand the majority of what you're learning in school and what the world teaches us as value is memorization. And you gotta understand something about memorization. Memorization means that there is a fact or there's information that you have to regurgitate. Nothing wrong with memorizing or, or memory. In fact, it's the reason why human beings are the flowers of the earth. We have this capa capacity to remember in our conscious mind, not just physiologically, but also in our computer. We literally have like computers in that way. But all information is dead. All facts are dead. Not necessarily bad dead, as in, you know, they're, they're evil, but that they are based on past events. Creativity never comes out of the past in and of itself. True creativity is a union with the present. Past facts also help. That's why I often say that I remix ideas because they're past ideas. But I remix them into the moment. True creativity happens only in the moment. That's the beauty of poetry and art is that it's spontaneous. That's really the word that I'm looking for. Spontaneity. Creativity is spontaneity. Spontaneity only happens in, just think of it physiologically, in your heart and in your, your horizontal consciousness. So your heart beats spontaneously. You don't have to think about what your heart's gonna do. Hey, can we talk in a moment? I'm, I'm real busy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Thank you, sir. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> All right, cool. This is my friend who hangs out here every once in a while. So um, your heart beats spontaneously. You don't have to do the beating of your heart. In the same way that the instinct that you would follow or could potentially recognize, respect, and move through life with happens spontaneously. You don't, a dog doesn't have to be told how to bark. There's these things that happen spontaneously. So when I say listen to and follow your heart and your balls, it literally is, really, literally means get in touch with the spontaneity of your body. That's why I spend so much time talking about the physical health of the body in relation to navigating your life. See, we want to do everything up here. We want to fix our life from up here. Life happens spontaneously. Life doesn't happen based on facts and information. Those are just tools that we use to, they're like icing on the cake for our ability to navigate life. But really, 
The power that resides in the human being is in his heart and in his, in his Holy Ghost, in his instinct. So with that understanding, how do you do it, Elliot? What do, you, what do you mean when you say, listen, how could I hear my heart and my balls? Well, what you might be expecting is voices, right? You think that you're going to hear voices like, you know, um, Abraham goes to the top of the mountain and God says, right? This is not necessarily the way it happens. Those are stories that help us understand that there is another intelligence, a more subtle intelligence that's guiding us. That intelligence, like I said, resides in your body, below your neck. If you stay in your head, you're going to be waiting for voices. And if you hear voices, then you might need to get your head checked. What you're looking for is the feeling, the spontaneous feelings in your body. Oftentimes, they come... The, all, when they say that people make decisions, they say that they make decisions emotionally and then justify rationally. That's because your first instinct you know, someone says, trust your first instinct, or the first word is the real one. If, some, if you're having a conversation with someone and they use the first, the first thing that comes out, is usually the one that's the, the most authentic. They're, it's the true one because you haven't had time to rationalize it. So one way is to get in touch with and trust your first instinct, right? If you're, whether, if you're deciding whether or not you should um, take a particular action with school or career or relationships, whatever the case may be, and you had a first instinct, you know, the first thing that came to you was, it's not right. But then, you know, mom and dad said, and school said, and the government believes, and everybody else is doing, and then you, you, they, all that information, all that dead stuff gets into your head, and then you start doing this, right? Now you're not listening to your heart, you're not listening to your balls. In fact, you're building a case against your heart and balls based on facts and information, which is dead, that other people have given you based on their experience. And most of their experiences aren't even their experiences because they're listening to what other people told them to do. So really, you're following a, a dead path. That first instinct should be one that you consider heavily. That's your, oftentimes your gut telling you what to do. That usually comes from your gut. That usually comes from your balls. You, you'll feel it very low in your body, if you're lucky. I've navigated my life and made the best choices in my life based on gut reactions. Some of the things that I've done to get to where I am look like shit on paper. Because on paper, you've got to calculate. On paper, it didn't look right for me to quit my job and start my business the way I did. I did. To have four children and be in debt. All those things are like pretty stupid. You, if you listen to the world and you listen to your head and you put that on paper, it's like, boy, you're, you're going to be doomed. But it was my gut I followed. Easier said than done for some people because we've become so dead to the spontaneity in our body that we don't even get that first response. What we start doing, what a lot of people start doing, is they start looking around for what other people will tell them is the right thing to do. You have a decision to make, and instead of consulting their first response or consulting the Son and the Holy Ghost, right? They want to hear what other people have to say. Well, you know, I'm going to run it by this guy. Oh, I love this one. I'm going to run it by my wife, right? I'm going to run it by all, see what all these other people say, as opposed to following your own. The way you exercise your body in order to become sensitive to the language of it is to soften the muscular system and breathe deeply. You've got to stop for a moment, take a few deep breaths. Don't, you don't have to make decisions right away, but you've got to become familiar with the instant, spontaneous movement in your body, right? Be with it. Be quiet. It's a very quiet, subtle fluctuation in the physiology. Take your time, be quiet, and consult with your body. Sun, Holy Ghost, right? Medulla and uh, cortex. It's your, it's your feeling mind and it's your instinctual mind. Remember, there's a unity of three. There's a, there's a triune going on. Triunity. I'm not saying don't listen to your head. But what I am inviting you to recognize is there's, a, there's an imbalance in the way that we approach our lives where the head has taken dominance over the heart and the, and the gut. Come back into touch with your body. Come back into the intelligence of your heart and your balls. And then measure it equally 
against the information that's been given to you in your head. That's how you follow your body. That's how you trust your gut. And that's how you navigate life successfully. Done.